I love this game. I've been playing Ultra Kill for a while now, and I have enjoyed every single second of it. From the insane combat that never gets old, to the amazing bosses, questionable secrets, and just... Uh, straight up fishing. I love this game. If you can think about it, Ultra Kill probably has it. This game is so amazing, and if it wasn't for my friends Shisaki and Bishop, I probably wouldn't have known about this game's existence. And that would have been a... Uh, ultra sad. I won't be going into a lot of details like lore and so on in this video, because there are great videos out there that explain it. I'm just gonna talk mostly about my experience when playing the game and engaging with the... community. So let's get into talking about my Ultra Kill experience. So the combat is basically what makes this game so fun. Wanna throw coins at the poor, killing them on impact, or create a fucking nuke? This game has you covered. The combat is so chaotic, my frontal yeah. lobe cannot even comprehend what is going on half of the time I'm playing. But we play as a silly little guy named V1. And V1, well, has a lot of weapons. V1 has five weapons, six including his arms. There are so many combinations that you can do with your weapons, and there are even more weapons to be added, if they haven't already been added whenever this video comes out. For revolvers, we have the piercer, the marksman, and the sharpshooter, and I use the marksman all the time. I love focusing my entire field of vision to hit a small speck on my screen. The marksman has great synergies with other guns if you want to do damage. It works great with the piercer and the rail cannon. And uh, I guess you can also be a cowboy. I never used this gun. For shotguns so far, we have the core eject and the pump charge. The shotgun is amazing, and also my main source of damage. Everyone uses the shotguns because they get the job done, and the shotgun also gives you the ability to create nukes. The second shotgun you can pump up to four times, and then run at an enemy to completely explode, like you have a bomb strapped to your chest. With nail guns, we have the attractor and the overheat so far. The nail gun has a magnet that you can stick onto your enemies to completely annihilate them. And the magnet also works with the overheat charges. The nail gun is a solid weapon. Absolutely amazing. For rail cannons, we have the electric rail cannon, screwdriver, and malicious. The rail cannon does so much damage, but after using it, it goes on cooldown. Sometimes I stare down the meter waiting for it to be ready so I can instantly use it when it's up. And I'm just gonna say this, but the screwdriver is the best. Yeah, the base rail cannon does more damage, but whenever I'm struggling, I know screwdriver got my back. Anyone who shits on it should fucking explode. And a malicious rail cannon I use to only commit war crimes. For the rocket launcher so far, we have freeze frame and SRS cannon. I use the rocket launcher, uh, sometimes. I mostly use it for rocket riding or accidentally blowing myself up. And for the rocket launcher, a lot of enemies just don't get damaged by it. This guy just smacks it away, this guy blocks it, and for Maurice, it just bounces off of him. And if you want to use the rocket properly, you have to hit your target directly. And my aim sucks. If you don't, it just makes the enemy do a little jump. I don't like this weapon. With your arms, you have your blue one that can parry, your green one, which is a grapple hook that can pull in bitches, and your red arm, aka the knuckle blaster, which I forget to use. And a lot of them I actually forget to use. Sometimes I just forget to switch when I'm gaming so hard that when I remember that a gun exists, I have an aneurysm trying to press E going through all the other options. But one weapon I could never forget is the Aww. screwdriver. One of the core mechanics in this game is also parrying, and you can like parry everything. Oh, uh... Ever had the thought while playing, hmm, I wonder if I can parry the- Oh my. If you want to know how insane parrying can get in this game, remember seeing this? Yeah, you can parry your own bullets, which is fucking nuts. And that's what I do 99% of this game for my damage, until I remember that the game has style points and then I have to actually switch weapons. Style points are basically like DMC, but instead you do it with the exaggerated swagger of a killing machine. But the combat is genuinely some of the most fun I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing in any video game. Definitely beats the 70 hours of Mercy gameplay experience. The level design in this game is amazing. Other than 5-2, fuck that level. It's so fucking hard to P-rank. This game can go from intense combat to being totally calm until it's not, to utterly terrifying. The game starts off by putting you in the prelude where you then afterwards have to defeat this guy and his friends, 
to then go through the gates of hell. And this is where Ultra Kill really starts. Right now as of recording this video, there are two acts out. Infinite Hyperdeath and Imperfect Hatred. With the third act coming out with the name God Fist Suicide, like that goes so fucking hard. And there has already been some sneak peeks of the new act and it's terrifying. Levels in this game are separated by layers, with there being three layers in each act with some secret levels sprinkled throughout the game. With Act 1 having Limbo, Lust, and Gluttony, and Act 2 with Greed, Wrath, and Heresy. Some of my favorite levels are Death at 20,000 Volts, Claire de Lune, and Any Level with Gabriel. For the levels I hate, A Shot in the Dark because fuck that last room, and all of fucking rap. Except Leviathan, he's pretty chill. But some of the best levels in the game are the secret levels. Most of the secret levels in this game are pretty calm. We have puzzle solving in Limbo, a dating sim where a female version of you talks about nihilism that you also, by the way, can buy an official body pillow off their merch store. Crash Bandicoot, sorry, I mean Clash of the Bandicoot for copyright reasons, which took me way too long to beat because of my terrible depth perception. And fishing, which is part of any good game. But the first secret mission I did was terrifying. This secret mission turns the game into a horror game. And the game makes it very obvious that you are not alone in this level. And if it finds you, good luck, you can't kill it. Shooting it only slows down your inevitable demise. Needless to say, the secret levels in this game are immaculate. At the end of each main level, you get a rank. The ranks range from D being the worst to P being the best. To get a P rank, you need to score S in style points, kills, and time. And holy shit, I've had so many runs ruined by getting an A in time. And if you like to mentally torment yourself, like me, you'll spend hours P-ranking every single level. But while P-ranking does make your entire level page gold, it does serve another purpose other than flexing on your friends. But that's a perfect way to get into our next segment. Oh, the bosses. Let's just get this over with. Here are the bosses I would have course with. The bosses in this game are amazing. Some of them are obvious Genshin players, and some of them are utterly terrifying. It's just a little guy. Ooh. The bosses in this game give you a great challenge. One boss you can bribe with money and he'll let you pass. Unless you have to P rank the level. There are a lot of bosses in this game, but I'm mainly gonna focus on the ones that are at the end of each layer. Except Leviathan. Fuck that fish. I think one of my favorite bosses, besides the obvious, has to be V2. Our first encounter with V2 is at the end of Limbo, and it starts off like this. It starts off so calm, you wouldn't even think about your demise that soon follows. After taking a short stroll through the level, collecting three skulls, and going through this door, you'll find the man of the hour. Or you could also just jump through this window. V2 is basically like you, except he's sus. V2 has the same movement and uses the same guns as you. And holy shit, I struggled with V2. V2 knows all of your moves. If you try to get too close to him, he'll back up. And if you try to distance yourself, he'll just lunge at you. So you have to actually use your brain to win against him. Or use the power of coins. But after defeating V2, he ends up running away like a little bitch. But hey, at least you got a new arm. Oh, and don't worry. This isn't the last time we see V2. V2 shows back up again at the end of Greed. Where man is just sitting there menacingly. V2's second encounter is tougher. Equipped with new weapons and having some new tricks up his sleeves, he is way stronger than when we first encountered him. You shoot a coin in the air? Well, guess what? If you don't manage to shoot the coin in time, V2 will shoot it for you. But after depleting his health bar, V2 runs away again. But this time, we won't let him get away. V2's second phase has a sliding down a fucking pyramid. This fight is so cool. Until he slips on a pebble. And uh, after defeating him, well, uh, I don't think we'll ever see him again. One of my favorite things about our second encounter with V2 is that if you punch him with his own arm, he gets enraged. The last layer of lust is where we'll find our next boss, where we have to find skulls to progress through the level. But on our way, we meet the hand that just kind of slaps around until it dies. After that weird encounter, we can finally place down the skulls and be done.
Oh no. And this is where we beat the corpse of King Minos. And bro is massive. King Minos' fight is fun. As long as you can parry, you'll have a great time. What I hate about the fight is the void he summons that slowly creeps up on you. But after you defeat him with ease, we need to get bored to progress to the next layer. Now for the boss that I've been waiting to talk about. Machine, <laughs> turn back now. Oh my god. I already liked Gabriel before I played the game, but after consuming media about him i'm just down bad now before your computer gets water damage from me thirsting over gabriel i'll actually talk about his boss fight and why it's my favorite we first encountered gabriel in the final level of gluttony and gabriel's fight was so hard for me gabriel is fast and having to deal with an enemy that's fast is not my strong suit during gabriel's fight he gives you a very small window where you can just wail on him while he degrades you you are less than nothing so at least he's a little generous. But after defeating his first phase, I love going under him to see how far up I can shoot him. But with his second phase, I struggle with so much because not only is he faster, but I also forgot that some moves he would do twice. But after we defeat him, he doesn't seem too pleased with it. So bro just dips out. We meet Gabriel again in Heresy where he's playing some sick tunes. And this time, he's not only faster, but he's completely lost it. He starts off still enraged from our last fight with him to then almost not caring what happens to him in his second phase. And we defeat him so hard the second time we fight him that he feels some sense of relief. Almost like he gets some sort of post nut clarity that he needs to take some time to process what just happened to him. Which really made him go down a spiral. Oh how I love my men that are unstable. Now, remember when I talked about P-ranking every level in the game wasn't only a flex on your friends, but actually served another purpose? Well, that time has come. Now, if you're brave enough to P-rank all of Act 1 and 2, you get access to the Prime bosses. Minos Prime is so hard. Before you can even be graced with the presence of Minos, you gotta defeat Flesh Prison. And I fucking hate Flesh Prison. Flesh Prison throws so much shit at you that you gotta micromanage that it gets so overwhelming for me. You gotta dodge projectiles, beams of light that are massive, and remember the orb from King Minos fight? Yeah, that thing is back again, stalking you. Flesh Prison also has these eyes to spawn like every 5 seconds, and if you don't kill them, Flesh Prison will just gain back its health from the eyes. But once you defeated Flesh Prison, the real fight begins. Oh, Minos Prime. Hope you've been parrying this entire game, because if you haven't, you're so fucked. Most of Minos' attacks are parryable, which I miss all the time. Most of the times I slide around like a maniac to see if I can dodge his moves, while shooting coins at him hoping my doubloons will make him stop. But each time I get knocked down, I get back up again. I memorize his attack patterns, remember to parry his grippers, getting better each time just so I can parry every single attack. Then I get to the second phase where none of that shit matters because his attacks are not parryable except the snake, which I always fumble. Having to use your parry to survive and then having that ability stripped away from you in his second phase is brutal. But after I defeated Minos, my hands were shaking so much with adrenaline that I basically contracted Parkinson's. Such a good fight, but you'll never see me P-ranking that shit. P2 fucking scares me. While P1 wants you to defeat Flesh Prison to get to Minos, which is so easy, P2 wants you to go against the entire Ultra Kill cast just to get to the boss room, which honestly makes me scared for what P3 is gonna be like. But I knew I had no choice. If I'm gonna make a video about my experience with Ultra Kill, I knew I had to defeat the current hardest boss. Saturday, September 9th. 1.15 p.m. is where my torment started. So I booted up the game for the sole purpose of defeating Sisyphus. I got finished with it 8 hours later. P2 was so fucking hard. If you didn't learn to parry from Minos Prime fight, then I don't think you're ready for P2. Half of my time spent with this run was this specific room. Having to fight off two unkillable mind flayers fucking sucks. You need to go through two rounds of enemies just to be able to finally kill them. 
that particular part made me so mad I genuinely wanted to cry. Finally, five hours later I had beaten the first obstacle. Now it was time for the real boss fight. Flesh Panopticon was somehow worse than Flesh Prison. Not only are the beams of light back, but they also go horizontal. But throughout the fight you also have to dodge a golden shower of projectiles that I died to so many times. And the void is also back. Again. Like Flesh Prison, the Flesh Panopticon can also heal itself. Flesh Panopticon spawns 4 golden orbs that will heal the cube if you don't destroy them fast enough. And also, as long as they are up, they will prevent you from healing by applying piss onto your health bar. I would zoom across the entire level trying to shoot these orbs down so I could try and heal. And I struggled so much trying to get Flesh Panopticon down to half health. I would either die to projectiles, or because my health bar was filled with too much piss. But finally, I found the right strategy and I could finally see myself getting Flesh Panopticon to half HP. This person to hold me. Yeah, Sisyphus just does the rest of the job for us. And this is where my torment truly started. <sighs> where do I even start? Sisyphus is fast, and even faster at being my ass. Even the terminal knows my demise. Most of my deaths were because he was going so fast I couldn't even see him. And also the fucking nuke he throws at you. But unlike Minos, most of Sisyphus' moves are parryable and stay parryable in the second phase. And speaking of the second phase, he gets even faster. This threw me off so much because I was sort of getting used to parrying his moves in this first phase. But then adding more speed was not helping my case. I studied all of his moves and came up with the perfect strategy. Brute fucking force. At some point, I couldn't give a shit about strategy. My brain was turning into a pile of mush just trying to keep up with him. I just ended up throwing everything I had at him in hopes that it worked. I was so tempted to leave his fight so many times, but I kept on trying over and over again. But with the comp of my willpower, saw blades, my screwdriver rail cannon, and three quarters that I planted into his skull, I finally did it. My heart was beating so fast, I thought I was going into cardiac arrest. 112 minutes. Or more like 230 because I accidentally rage quit in one of my previous runs. And 250 deaths, which I honestly thought was going to be higher the way my ass was handed to me. But I had finally done it. I beat the hardest boss in the game in one day. Also, I'll never p-rank any of these levels, because if I tried, I'd go fucking insane. Ultra Kill is an amazing game, and I recommend it to anyone who likes fast-paced games, a banger soundtrack, and men in armor. The game has genuinely inspired me on so many levels, and I'm happy I got to experience it. Just seeing how much love and effort was put into this game, and interacting with the community, and by interacting, I mean stalking the Discord server because I'm an introvert and I find it hard to talk with strangers about my passion. But the amount of inspiration that this game has given me is insane. After playing the game, I wanted to get back into 3D modeling again. I've gotten into pixel art now, and I'm experiencing more with my art. Just because of a silly robot that goes through hell to suck up blood. This game is so much fun, and I'm glad I got to experience it. I have never made a video like this before, so if something did not make any sense, that's on me. I had to scrap a lot of my ideas for this video because either the video got too long or I ran out of creativity. But I will definitely make more videos like this in the future when I find other games that I like. Sadly, I get so caught up in drawing that I don't play as many video games anymore. I definitely have a certain drawing obsession right now. But don't expect my entire channel to just be game reviews. I draw a lot as well, so some of my content will also be art related. But what I can say is that my next video will also be ultra kill related. But thank you for watching. If you want to see more of my art or more of me in general, you can follow me on Twitter because that's where I'm mostly active. And I'll see you guys again when I decide to get off my ass to do another video project.